Hello guys, this is Ty, AKA the Flip Man. Today, 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 I have a student out of Memphis, uh, my man, Jason. Uh, he called me on yesterday uh, to let me know he closed his first deal. Uh, made me excited. You know, I, anytime I get that call, it it, it uh, makes me let me know that, hey, I'm, I'm changing someone else's life just like mine was changed 13, almost 14 years ago. But I'm gonna bring Jason on here and uh, I'm gonna stop talking and I'm gonna let you listen to him because what he has to say, I think is more important than what I have to say. Um, before I um, uh, get to him, just to um, do a little house cleaning here. Um, hopefully you all can see that. You can see that Jason. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, you want to get a copy of my free contract, uh, you can simply go to, uh, well, you can text the word contract to, uh, 313131, uh, just check, check, test the word contract to 31313. Don't text me. No area code, just those six numbers, 31313, and just treat it as a phone number and text the word contract. You can get a copy of my free contract. Join us on... Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Mountain, 4 p.m. Pacific for live Flippinar seminar and webinar. I had a baby and produced a Flippinar where um, just I have a different topic every week. And this was the first week I actually gave away two free courses for people that attended the course. I mean, attended the Flippinar. So, you know, hey, if you're there, you have an opportunity to win, to win uh, the wholesale housing and apartments course for free. So you can register at flippinard.com. That's flippinard.com. If you need proof of funds, you can um, go to realpof.com. If you're dealing with realtors, that's the only way they're going to take you serious. Uh, realpof.com. You also know that you can access my 100 plus videos um, at uh, flipman.net. Um, that's flipman.net. Uh, you can access the 200 plus videos I have on YouTube on wholesaling houses and apartments. So let me go back here. All right, you see me again, uh, Jason? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, bring Jason out of Memphis, Tennessee, making easy money. I won't say the rest. <laughs> <laughs> in style <laughs> but uh uh hey man uh, how's it going how's it going jason hello jason I didn't get that last part Ty. you broke up oh well, no okay. i ask you how, how are you doing um i guess we a little connection problem here so how are you doing i'm man? doing i'm doing great a day after um like closing my first deal, I'm doing I'm doing great. I thought I was motivated to, you know, really jump into the business before closing a deal, but now that I've actually closed one, it just gives you a little bit more fire, a little bit more intensity um, to go to the next one. So um, I'm excited. Um, I knew I could do it, um, but like I said, before I reached out to you, I just needed that extra push, um, you know, and definitely a mentor to just give me answer a few more questions, provide me a few more ideas. Um, before I actually, you know, jumped off the porch and just dove into it. So, um, and well, I got, go ahead. Let, let me ask you, you only get a hell of stuff on the deal. I like to try to build up so you, you can okay. share your experience. Uh, and others can relate to it. Um, well, just tell us about how, uh, what led you to real estate and what experience or non-experience that you may have had. If, if you could just go through your stories for how you, got into real estate and interested in real estate. Okay. So I, um, <clears throat> I did what a lot of people did. You know, I went to college, um, got a bachelor's degree, got a master's degree, started working in corporate America, was able to kind of travel, live in different cities, uh, with, with my job. And about 2004, uh, my mom got sick and, uh, was in a coma for about a month. So I needed to take some FMLA from work, which was no problem, but I was off anywhere between a month to three months dealing with that. Um, and my uncle actually pulled me to the side and he said, hey, you know, that's great that your job lets you get off this amount of time. And I said, yes, yeah, no problem. He says, but what if they didn't? <laughs> he 
he says, you know, what other income did you, would you have coming in? And at that time, he had owned apartment buildings, homes, two family flats in Detroit, uh, which is where I'm from. So I was always kind of exposed to what he was doing with real estate and he was very successful with it. And at that point, I just really started thinking, well, I didn't want to work a nine to five my entire life, but you know, that might be another source, source of income for me going forward. And I was interested in it. So that my mom passed in 2004, came back to Memphis. Within a month, I had joined um, um, a class to get my real estate license. Now this was 2000, I'm sorry, this was 2004. So the next year, 2005, um, when real estate was starting to pick up and it was booming, um, took the class, passed the state exam, got my real realtor's license. And I took it as become a realtor first, learn the areas in Memphis. Um, I had only been living there a couple years, meet some contacts, sell some houses, and really learn the, the, the rental market uh, in the area. And that's what I did. So for a couple years when it was booming, uh, I sold real estate and I became in love with it. And I kind of put a five to 10 year plan in mind that you know, in 15, 10 to 15 years, I want to leave corporate America and do real estate full time. So that's what I was working toward. And that's how I'm, I was first exposed to real estate, you know, 11 years ago. So fast forward 2008, 2009, um, between 2005, 2008, 2009, my nine to five job really took off. So I was getting promoted. Uh, I moved again a few times. <laughs> Uh, but I always kept my eye on, on the prize, which was long-term investing uh, and uh, obtaining rental property. So 2009, fast forward 2009, started my LLC, bought a rental property, um, rehabbed it, put a tenant in it. A couple months later, bought another one. Um, the next year, I bought another one with another one. So at that point, I was cash flowing on these rental properties because I paid cash, um, didn't have a mortgage on them. So I was 100% cash flow each month. So first I became a landlord, not quite, so I was investing, but not flipping, uh, not doing wholesaling, even though I was interested in it. And I, I really just wanted to focus on having some rental properties. So um, that's what I did, man. And uh, you know, by 2012, 2013, I had five rental properties, um, free and clear on four of the five. Uh, and cash flowing tenants, good tenants in there. Um, but around 2013 is when corporate America just really started to get old, so to speak. Um, you know, when you get married and you start have kids working six days a week sometimes and working on the holidays just wasn't what I wanted to do long term anymore. Um, and that's what I found. The industry changed. So I was working longer hours. I was working sometimes six, seven days a week and I was working on the holidays. That just wasn't what I wanted to do another 20 to 30 years. So fast forward, I had my cash flow coming in from my rental properties. I made some other good investments, so I was able to get a lot of debt paid off. So that's when I really started focusing on the wholesaling piece. So I took about, I guess, a year and a half of really just um, reading a lot of books, uh, a lot of Google articles, went to a few seminars, um, and of course, YouTube, I mean, you've said it before, YouTube is your friend, right? You can learn a lot on YouTube, okay? So for anybody that's watching this, you know, don't just think that somebody's going to hold your hand and walk you through everything. You got to do the work sometimes, all right? You got to educate yourself, all right? You got to put in that time. Even if you do have a nine to five, you got to find the time to put in that time to educate yourself. So um, did that and... Uh, um, you know, was really doing good with adding some more rental properties. So, you know, about two years ago, I left corporate America. Um, and when I say I left it, $95,000 on the table is what I left. So I yeah. wasn't, I wasn't making, you know, 30, no, no pun intended, but I wasn't making 25, 30,000, $95,000 I left on the table. Now, a lot of people told me I was crazy for doing that. Are you crazy? You're going to leave a good job to go follow your dreams? Yes. I am going to do that because there's nobody at my mama always told me there's only one person you can count on in this world. And that's yourself. I believed in myself. I believed in myself and my wife supported me um, in a decision. And uh, like I said, I did it and uh, was getting close to really just 
getting that whole selling piece down. And uh, I saw something um, on YouTube actually with Ty on some videos and I said, wow, I saw a lot of people that were offering all these programs. I've seen $30,000 programs. I've seen $1,300 programs, but they all, they all, the, the dialogue was seminar talk to me. And, yeah. you know, it was kind of slick talk, so, so to speak. And I just didn't trust it. But I saw, I ran across a video um, for Ty and I said, okay, this guy seems straightforward. It seems down to earth. Um, and I'm going to reach out to him. So I reached out to him. And the first thing that stood out was you text back immediately within five minutes. And we just kind of had a dialogue about where I was from and so forth and so on. And, um, you know, you offered to kind of mentor me a little bit through as I start through this wholesale business. Um, and it was a win-win for both of us. So I think we spoke at the end of September, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, and then um, I reviewed a lot of your training, I think the last week of September. Um, and then I was – wholesaling that first week of, uh, of October. So, um, so that, that's kind of how, how I got started um, with real estate. So I, I, I guess my story is different because I had a little bit more experience being a realtor, um, mm -hmm. having, having rental properties and cash flow. Um, I just, I guess I just wanted to take it to another level or add that extra caveat to my investing uh, experience. So, um, and this is, this is what I plan on doing full time. You know, my rental properties, I tend on continue to buy rental properties and continue to do wholesaling. I think in a few years or another year, I may dive into the actual um, buy, rehab, and flip just to, as another challenge, just to see um, if I like that aspect of it. Um, and that's what I plan on doing for the next uh, 20 or 30 years. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, uh, let, let's get to the, uh, the juicy part of it. Um, uh, so I assume, um, if you could correct me, um, had you already started trying to look for deals to wholesale before you contacted yes. me? Or yes, I, I had, I had, I had already somewhat, you know, started looking for deals, um, and at the same time, I had somewhat built up a buyer's list. Um, because it was another property, one of my rental properties that I actually sold earlier in the year. And when I put that property out there to sale, I got contacted by a lot of investors um, across the country, mainly California. So once I had, had that property under contract, um, the folks that were calling, I basically was getting their information um, as a potential cash buyer in the future. Um, so even though I hadn't had a, a property on the contract, I was thinking long term, well, these guys are cash buyers, so I need to get their information to add to my list. So from January, fast forward to August, September, um, I had tried a little bit, like I said, to, to reach out there to see about getting some contracts, um, but just wasn't just wasn't having any success. I figured I was missing something. Um, and again, continued my YouTube um, education. And again, that's when I ran across you and I said, all right, maybe it's time to just, I know the importance of having a mentor, but I said, it's, it maybe it's time to reach out and uh, see, see exactly what I'm missing. Okay. Well, um, well tell us, um, how did you find the deal that you uh, closed on yesterday? If you'll take us through that process, because okay. you, you did something I've never been able to do. I guess I haven't been consistent enough with it, but I've never had any any success with it. So it's even more interesting because I've never done it myself this way. So, okay. So, um, the first, so October 3rd, no, October 2nd, um, I didn't have any bandit signs yet because it's political season and they told me it would be three to four, three to five weeks before I would get any. Oh, so, one, one, one more thing before you get, I just looked on my phone. I keep, you know, records of students in my phone or when they sign up. So, so you basically signed up on, on September 15th and you closed the deal on September 27th, just to give a timeline for your actual uh, situation. So that's basically about what, 30, what about 40, what is that, uh, 30? So that's about about 42 days you closed the deal from the time you signed up. But go, but go ahead on how you found out, how you found the deal. Okay, so like you said, that September timeframe, I spent that time just studying the videos, um, 
um, after we had spoke. So I think it was October 2nd. I didn't have any bandit signs yet, um, again, because it's political season. They said it would be three to five weeks. So I said, well, I don't want to wait that long. I'm going to try something. So I actually put an ad on Craigslist on October 2nd saying uh, in the real estate section, saying something simple like I buy, ca- I buy houses as is for cash. Um, and I put my phone number on there. So that was on October 2nd. On October 3rd, I received a call uh, from a young lady saying that uh, she had just got a new job and they had a house that they rehab, partially rehab, and they wanted out of it ASAP. They didn't want to rent it from Houston. I'm sorry, from Dallas. They were ready to move. They started the new job that the next week. They wanted out of it. So I uh, went through a couple of questions to ask him about the house. Um, so what? So what type of property was it for them? It was a it was a house they bought on a tax sale. They were going to use it as a rental property. Oh, okay. Okay. So they partially rehabbed it, but they didn't complete it all. Okay. Um, and they were moving to Dallas, so they didn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, mm-hmm. So I ran the numbers on the property, and uh, it looked like it's possibly a good deal. Called her back, and uh, we agreed to meet at the property on October. Um, October, I think it was October 4th, okay? Um, Hold on one second. So we met at the property, uh, her and her husband. Uh, October, actually it was October 6th we met at the property, October 6th. And um, I did a walkthrough of the property. Again, having experience, having rental properties and doing rehab work, I kind of knew what the repairs were going to be. So I offered her a price. She declined the offer. She just flat out told me what she needed for the property to feel comfortable. Okay. What did what did you offer, and what did she counter? All right, I offered. It was pretty embarrassing. I offered forty five forty forty five (laughs) hundred for the property. But that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to feel horrible about it. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it was rough coming out, Ty. I mean, I felt. I mean, I had my head down. You know, I was just like, boy, what am I? Why am I going to say this? But yeah, so it was forty five hundred, and she had a number in mind, uh, which was seventy five hundred. That was her number that she wanted to walk away with. Um, so I came back with like I think sixty five hundred, and we went back and forth and negotiated. Um, she was a little off. She had quite a bit. Well, about five five hundred to a thousand dollars in taxes. Um, that about five hundred in taxes that she had. So basically, what we did, I bumped the price up to 8000 again, not being greedy, but I said, okay, if $8,000 uh, minus the money that she need for the taxes, that would put her exactly where she needed to be, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and she accepted. So I hadn't wrote the contract up or anything before going there. So basically, I had some blank copies of the contract, um, and I wrote two contracts out right there in the living room, um, exactly the same. Uh, we both signed them. We dated them. I went through them with them. Um, they got a copy. I kept a copy and I gave them $10, um, cash for earnest money. Um, just to tell this, to show them that I was serious about, uh, <laughs> yeah. doing business with them. Yeah. You, uh, you, you, you use the, uh, I guess you use, yeah, I think you told me yesterday you used the contract that, um, that I use, right? Correct. Yeah. All right. All right. So they didn't have a problem with that contract as I tell people. It's just a simple contract. It's, no, it's, it's simple, man. No, <laughs> it's um, it's one like I told him. It's one page. It's not a lot of legal jargon in there. Lengthy legal jargon. Now, one of the things I did do, we did go through each bullet point, um, okay. wow. and just because I just wanted to make sure they understood what was going on, and you know, they said it. You know, they had a copy. They read through it with me, and they said I don't have any issues with it. It makes sense. It's straightforward. Okay. Um. So, like I said, um, they had a copy. I had a copy. Um, before I left, I took pictures of the property. I also took a short, about five minute video of the property inside and out. So that was on October 6th. That night went home, did the same thing. Um, took the description of the home, took pictures, put it on Craigslist property for sale. Um, I think at that time I put 15,000, um, yeah, 15,000 is what I put it out there for which was October 7th, um, phone, email was constant, okay? All day, all day on the 7th, all right. constant calls, constant emails about the property. Let, let, let me stop you there, all right? Yeah. 
good, a good illustrate a couple things here. All right. And people always ask me, what is work in my city? Right. Okay. And I, I tell them, do people get divorced in your city? Do people lose their job? In this situation, do people relocate from your city? You know, so all of the, we know all of these things happen no matter where you are, which creates motivation. Your seller was motivated because they're moving. And now this rental property that they thought they wanted to get into the business is now is not considered an asset to them anymore. It's a problem. Correct. So now they're motivated to sell it at a discount. That's to your advantage because you are solving their problem. The other thing is my man put it on the contract with the one page contract, gave him 10 bucks, 10 bucks. And then the, the third thing is he listed it on credit. I'm getting ahead of him, but he'll explain <laughs> He listed it on credit. He didn't have any buyers, didn't have a buyer, right? They wasn't even thinking about that before you went out there, right? No. Okay. Put it on Craigslist. Guys, it's not hard to give away money. His phone email started to blow up. Go ahead, Jason. So um, now, you know, I mentioned that I had a few contacts from earlier in the year when I sold one of my rental properties. Mm -hmm. I hadn't even sent it to them yet. You know, I hadn't even gotten around to that yet um, because I said, first things first, let me put it on Craigslist. So again, phone constantly ringing. Um, and the one, one of the calls that I did get was, hey, I, I'm a realtor. I got a call from a realtor. He says, hey, I got a, a client in California that's interested in the property. Um, he says, when I work with wholesalers, my fee is $1,000. I said, I don't pay realtors. <laughs> let me stop said, you. <laughs> I meant it on the you know, flipper. I'm, I'm going to let you tell it, but I meant it on the flipper. Dog. I said, I ain't tell him yesterday. I said, but you can't haggle over $500, man. <laughs> but go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. So go, go ahead. He, go ahead. He, he, he says, um, um, my fee is $1,000. I said, well, I don't pay any type of fees or referral fees to, to realtors. So he says, well, uh, my buyer is, is, is serious. He's from California. He pays all cash. And I said, well, if I did consider working um, with you, I would, my, I would pay you 500, we, I'd pay you $500. So he says, well, no. And we went back and forth and negotiated. So we ended up agreeing on $700 as his fee. Now, um, coming from a real, being a realtor and things of that nature, you know, the real estate commission is very, it's very fishy about how realtors can receive commission. Okay. Um, so what, what we did was perfectly legal is since he was a buyer agent for his buyer, he had a contract with that, with that, with that buyer. So he did the contract with his buyer for $700. And then what I did was I reduced the price of the house by $700. So instead of fifteen thousand, I had it on sale. We I put the price for fourteen three. He said perfect. So October seventh, again same day, we met at the. He did a five minute walkthrough and said it's a it's a it's a go. Now earlier in that day when we were talking, I sent him the five minute video of the property and he sent to the buyer. The buyer said thumbs up. Um. So we just wanted to do a final walkthrough. So later on that evening, I oh, met him at, go ahead. Did you, did you upload the video to YouTube or how, how did you, how did you do that? I actually hadn't even gotten around to doing that. Okay. I had it on my phone and uh, it was like actually four minutes and 50 seconds. Mm -hmm. I, I sent it to him. It, it went through and he forwarded um, okay. to the, um, to the buyer. Buyer was interested. Um, so uh, me and the agent, we met at the house. He, like I said, he took five minutes um, and said, it's a done deal. Um, he said, send me the, the contract and I'll get the buyer to sign it. So went home, filled out the buyer contract for $14,300 versus the $15,000. Um, I put down for earnest money $1,000 um, and I sent it off. But I didn't put 30 days um, as I did with the seller. I put 14 days to close, to close the deal. Um, sent it off um, about an hour 
the realtor emailed me back with the contract signed. Um, from there, did, so did they use the realtor's contract or they use they used mine? The one page contract. Right. I said, I'm not using any other contracts. I want to use mine because um, that was important to me. I wanted to control just from. Oh, wow. Yeah. You, to you finish, have. I wanted to have <laughs> use my contract. <laughs> so Yo, if the realtor. Yeah. So if he wanted to use a buyer agency contract with, you know, his client, that's on them. Um, because, again, he was paying his seven hundred dollar fee. That was on them. But as far as dealing with the house, I wanted to use, you know, my contract. And he didn't have any issues with that neither the buyer or the, uh, the, the agent. So as soon as I received the um, contract, I had already had a title company. I know you mentioned that that's the last thing you want to worry about. But again, from me buying, being in the business already, months ago, I had already talked to the title company that I used and said, hey, I'm getting ready to dive into wholesaling. Is that going to be a problem? They said no. So she, we had already had a relationship. So Friday, that, that, I think that was a, a Saturday or Friday, October 7th, that night, I sent the seller's contract, the buyer's contract, and a brief description, closing description of everything that was going on. Um, right. That's the process. Basically just saying, here's the seller, buyer. I gave her the seller's uh, phone numbers, the names, the buyer's phone numbers, names, the agent's phone numbers, names. Um, and best just saying, hey, here's the purchase price, eight thousand. Here's the selling price, fourteen three. Um, and I'll I'll be you know getting getting that difference. So um, from there, I sent that off that night on the seventh. Um, and I think that Monday coming up, I think it was um, a holiday that Monday, so they were off. Mm -hmm. um, and then that Tuesday, she called me. And said, "Hey, I've already contacted the agent." That would have um, been there. That Monday would have been the tenth. Okay, so yeah, that eleventh, she contacted me, and said, um, "I've already received. I've talked to the buyer, and he's wiring the money this afternoon, a thousand dollars, earnest money." Um, she, and then she says, "Once I get that, I'll start running title." So I know, I know you mentioned before, a lot of people are concerned about the title company. Listen. <laughs> that's the least they need to be worried about. You can call any title company and ask them, hey, do you do assignment closes? And they're most likely going to say yes. If they do, just ask them, you know, how long does it normally take to run title and kind of their fees? And, and you go from there. It's not, it's not, that's the least you need to worry about. Well, well let, me, let me say this now. Sometimes it's not like that. And, Memphis is a different city. Y'all got you. You all are ahead of the curve on most cities when it comes to wholesaling. Okay. So it's it's not going to be a lot of. T it's probably no title companies that's been around for especially uh, uh, in Memphis that don't know about wholesaling. In other markets, it's not. It's not as. It's not the same. But that. But you still don't worry about it because. Once you have a seller and a buyer in place committed with contracts, trust me, they want the business because it's an easy exactly. transaction. That's an easy, exactly. that's an easy hour con transaction of putting it together and closing the deal. That's the easiest uh, five hundred to a thousand dollars they'll ever make. You know, so but but go ahead. I just want to you know just interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah, like 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 you said, that's there's a handful of title companies out there. You can go on Google to look at reviews and get an idea of who's who's good. And again, you call them, um, you ask them again, they're not going to pass up, you know, like you said, that five to twelve hundred dollars in, in revenue. Um, so, again, that Tuesday, I talked to her and she said, I want to run title. Um, it could be anywhere between seven to, to ten days. Perfect. Push, push your screen down just a, a little, I think. Okay. Uh, okay. Up, up a little bit. Up. OK, good, good. OK, good, good. good. Um, so from then. Um, first thing I did that, that day was just reach out to the sellers, um, and tell them that we are currently running title. Um, and to, to be patient it can be anywhere between, you know, five to, to 14 days before we get this, this deal done. And they were excited, um, you know, about being able to, again, cause they had already moved by that point, um, um, being able to, 
um, get out of the house and kind of just start their new life in, in, in Dallas. So from there, you know, it was just a waiting game, so, so to speak. Um, so in, in the meantime, I continued to, to advertise, continue to try to work deals. Um, now, Friday, this past Friday, last Friday, actually, I got a call from the title company saying that um, the title was in and uh, when did we want to close. So I said, well, let's close on Monday. Okay, I'll reach out to the sellers and we'll get everything done. So it was it was a done deal. We were going to close this this Monday. Well, Monday came and apparently we had an issue. Okay, we couldn't close. We had an issue. Apparently the realtor gave his buyer the wrong information as far as closing costs. Um, I guess he didn't estimate the closing costs, even though it was in the contract that the seller was going to be paying the closing costs. So the buyer didn't wire enough money to complete the transaction. So the oh, buyers. Do, do you mean the, the buyer was going to be paying the closing cost or, or the seller? Um, the buyer. Seller. Okay. The buyer. I'm sorry. The buyer. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. All right. So he didn't figure he didn't figure that in to the um, to his cost. So with that being said, he said, well, I won't be able to close now until Thursday. So I talked to the title company. I was like, okay, well, that's that's fine. It is what it is. That's what we need to do um, to get it done. So I wasn't excited about it because um, the sellers had came back in town that week, that weekend to close. So they wanted to close on Monday and then get back on the road on Wednesday. So I wasn't excited about calling them back and telling them uh, things have been pushed back. Um, but they were they were okay with it. They I think they were a little weary just saying, well, when are we going to be able to close? And I said, well, it will be Thursday. So they ended up having to take an extra day off of work um, to stay the extra day. So what I did is every day on Tuesday and Wednesday, I would just call them um, and just say, just to follow up with them, just to say, hey, we're still we're still on for Thursday. Um, I don't want you guys to worry. We're going to get this deal done so you can start your, start your new life in Dallas. And I think they appreciated that and took some worry off off of them. Um, and then, like I said, Thursday came. He wired the money Wednesday night, um, so it should have wired by noon on Thursday. Noon came and went, and I still hadn't gotten a call yet. So I was a little I was a little worried again as well. But at 1:30 on Thursday, she called and said, "Okay, you can send them up here. We're, we're set to go." So I called them um, and said it was showtime. And that I and then I would meet them up there, and um, when I got up there, they were already in the lobby. They signed the warranty deed. They were already in the lobby waiting for me. Shook their hand. They already had their check. Shook their hand, um, and told them good luck. Um, and then we stepped outside, and I also did a little bit of marketing with them again. I told them that you know I can do this this business from anywhere in the country, and that if they know anybody that's you know, going through a divorce or in their same situation or behind on taxes to uh, give me a call. And I told them that, you know, if you, if I close a deal that you brought to me, I'll give you $500. So shook their hand again and, um, you know, spoke again with them briefly um, last night, actually, before they got back on the road to Dallas. And they just said how thankful they were and uh, good luck to me. And then I went back into the back office and uh, talked to a few people at the title company and um, got, got my check and got my other copies of my documents, put in a folder and uh, walked out of the building, got in my truck and uh, called you um, and just left you a message just telling you what happened and then um, came home and then it was, you know, started looking for the next deal actually. Um, that, that's what's happening, man. That, yep. That's what's happening. I was uh, when you called me, I was um, standing in a burnout um, in a burnout house and um, trying to see what what was on the seller's mind or whatever on that. <laughs> so I sent them a contract today. So hopefully they'll sign it or whatever. But uh, right. OK, well, hey, that, that that's great, man. You you did a great job of explaining it. Could you uh, share with um, uh, everyone what what's next for you? Well, continuing to doing the um, the wholesaling, I um, I'm still continuing the, my marketing on Craigslist. I get a lot of calls and emails um, via Craigslist 
Um, deals don't always work out. They just, the numbers just don't make sense. Um, I am, but the majority of calls that I have been getting, um, now that I have my bandit signs, are through my bandit signs. That's, okay. that's my number one way that I've, that I've been getting calls. Um, and continue uh, my mail, my mail campaign. So just, um, again, looking, looking for my next deal. Um, um, continuing to be in a, a realtor as well. Again, that's another stream of income, um, for me. And then again, um, I'm probably not going to buy any more, more rentals this year, but going to be looking to buy another rental property, uh, next year. But, uh, my main, my main focus right now is to continue with the, uh, with the wholesale business. Okay, great, man. Um, I, I, really I didn't say the amount. You want me to tell the uh, amount? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The no. first, the first deal. So it was. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Six thousand four hundred forty dollars and forty cents. First deal. Okay. Yeah, see, I did the, um, I did the return on investment on it. You, you spent ten bucks, and uh, the return on it is like sixty four thousand three hundred and forty something. I think. If my math is correct, from I just did that yesterday. I know that's a ridiculous return on investment, <laughs> hey, but it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, this, so this guy basically, it really started for him on October 2nd when he placed the ad, and he closed it on the 27th. So that's 25 days, and he put six thousand four hundred forty-four dollars and forty cents in his pocket. Boom! That that basically covers your marketing for the entire year to springboard into deal Absolutely. after deal, you know? So, um, man, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for you, man. Uh, bright, bright guy. Um, you already, you know, Hey, he, as bright as this guy is, as you can tell in this video, people, he still had to take action. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. But he's not exactly. afraid to do that or whatever. And everybody go about it at their own pace. So that that's understandable, but really appreciate Jason sharing his story, man. Um, I can just sit back and listen to stuff like that all day, you know, cause it's real. And I, but I guess you don't know it's real until it, until it happens. So, um, right. I'm sure you cast the check. Don't spend it all in one place. Uh, do anything else you want to <laughs> share with people before yeah. we, before we go and I get my little spiel here. Yeah. One thing is that, you know, uh, you did the return of investment, but I, on this deal, I spent, do going forward, I, I keep I keep track of the time that I spent on. So I spent six hours total. So that's a thousand, a thousand dollars, a thousand seventy five dollars that I spent an hour. Wow. So nobody, again, just my opinion, no job is going to pay you that what you what you think you're worth. Now I'm not saying quit go quit your job right now. I'm not I'm not saying that at at all. But what I'm saying is if you got a passion for something whether it be real estate or you want to own your own beauty supply shop or your own barber shop. Like Ty said, you got to take action. You got to jump off the porch. You got to put a plan in place. You got to work toward it. You got to get a mentor and then you got to, you got to take action. Okay. Whatever it is. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to say that six hours, um, worth, worth of work a thousand bucks uh, per hour. Okay. That's, that's, that's my going rate. Hey, Make them, make so them to speak. Great again. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Amen. Amen, hey, brother. Yeah, man. We really appreciate Jason coming out and uh, sharing his story with us. Uh, just before you go, don't forget you can access um, 200 plus free videos on YouTube through Flipman.net. Uh, join us live on the webinars. I'm, I'm sorry, Flippinars on uh, Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. At, you can do that at Flippinard.com. Uh, if you need a free copy of the contract that Jason just used on the deal he closed, you can just text the word contract to 313131. Uh, need proof of funds, realpof.com. You'll probably see all of these uh, promotions on the screen here after I cut this up, but uh, get it cut up. But uh, I really appreciate Jason uh, showing up. Hopefully this is recorded, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but um, again, man, thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, and I guess we'll see you all on the uh, flip side. Take care. All right. Thanks, man.